Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The energy that has been put forward today, sometimes it's collectively addictive. And that means that some of you start to feel, this is where I belong. You meet family, perhaps. But more than that, you're starting to understand and realize and feel that which is so elusive, a communication, a kind of communication, even very long distance, even through this media, which is addictive. And it's not necessarily an evangelistic message at all that, that attracts you. In fact, it's not even the message, not really. Some of you are feeling where there's, there's a lot of things I'm hearing about I, I wasn't really aware of, and others are saying, I've heard this all before, but there's something different here. Even as you sit there, there's something different here. And there is. In my channel last night, I mentioned something that old souls in particular and all humanity in general is starting to push the envelope of their dimension. Now this is difficult and eye rolling for many. And we're going to say it again and again. The dimensionality is your reality. It's what you touch and you feel you experience and you sense and it's what you've been told and what you believe. It's the core, perhaps, of who you are. And that is beginning to shift. And what is shifting is like a ceiling that is starting to raise, to become higher, and you didn't expect it. And when the metaphor is the ceiling gets higher, it means it exposes more of the things that you weren't aware of. It's a metaphor, dear ones. It's a metaphor for being able to slightly see through the veil, even. The veil that has separated you, not just from another dimension, but a veil that has separated you, perhaps even from a greater truth. What is one of the questions that is asked over and over? by not only theologians, but those who are esoteric in every field, and intellectuals, will say, what is the meaning of life? And of course, there are libraries filled with this, because no one seems to understand or know, and there are many who believe they, are, they do, and, and on and on, and you know I'm right. What if? The veil just starts to lift a little. And it's like pulling back the curtain where some of you can see it for the first time and sense it for the first time. And you say to yourselves, oh my, oh my, I never ever saw that. And it's something that is good that you didn't realize or it wasn't told to you or perhaps it was vastly different than anything you suspected. You are pushing dimensionality. And again, I'll say this. There are many, many dimensions. Dimensionality is a measurement of physics. It is something that your scientists have determined. What is a dimension? How many might there be? Most of them are exposed in the study of atomic structure. When the scientists start to say, well, up to now we realize that all that is, that we realize and work with every day is in four dimensions. We said this before, height, width, depth, and time. And that becomes the world of the human being, no matter what. 
But the scientists say, well, there's more. There's five and six and seven. A few years ago, they said, we have discovered, based upon atomic structure study, that there are now 11. And then slightly later, they said, well, now there's 26. <laughs> In other words, the more they looked at it, the more was revealed, the more they realized that there may be many, many more. Now, what does this mean to you as you sit in the chair? Yet again, I'll ask the question for where I'm going next. Is it possible that you are only living a reality that is a fraction of truth? Do you think of that? There are so many humans that say, I only believe what I see. I only can relate to what I can touch and Crying, you're giving us all of these eye-rolling principles and ideas. They make no sense at all. I choose to not believe them because I cannot see them. I cannot touch them. So that is the human being saying, I am comfortable knowing what I know. Don't bother me with the rest of the story. Or the human that is saying there is no rest of the story. That's all there is, even though science <laughs> tells them differently. No. Did you know that light can be in two places at the same time? Have you heard about entanglement? I said that before. I even said that in this conference. I'll say it again. Can you imagine a reality where you can talk to someone or something or even work with an object that's in two places at the same time? One is here on the planet, another is someplace else in the galaxy and you're talking to them in real time. You think that is fallacy? Ask about entanglement. This is another dimensional reality. There are those who say, well, I'm not interested in that reality. I like mine. Let me tell you how this works, dear ones. That which you are comfortable becomes the core. And it always will, will be for a human being. That's the core reality. But as you start to broach other dimensions, they're added on to the core. You don't suddenly becoming a, a wisp of light that does something. This is not what we're talking about. We are talking about a dimensionality that becomes more comfortable because you know more. What if truth was this way? where you start to push the envelope of your own consciousness and you start asking the question, you say, I like the way I have it here and I'm very comfortable. Is there something else that would add to it and make me even more comfortable? This or something better? There are so many humans who hear these words and say, no, I'm really not interested in the change. I choose to stay in my box because they fear the idea that if they did change, that box of familiarity would disappear. Well, it doesn't. It's simply enhanced. You have a core knowledge, perhaps, of mathematics. Maybe you've studied arithmetic and algebra, and here comes all the rest of it and the calculus and all. Let me ask you, do you have to then throw away the arithmetic? and throw away and, and study a whole other language? Is the answer no. One is the basis of the other. It adds to it. It helps you to understand all that is. You go into a graduate study of the core knowledge that you have. I say that so you will not fear broaching another dimension. You're starting to do that. I told you before that what this truly means to you right now in this moment is that those with the most earthly experience will start an ability to sense more than they've ever sensed before. And that means that you will see that which is comforting, perhaps, and loving. You'll have some some more spirituality added that is logical to you and for you, makes more sense and helps you through things. Some of you have already expressed this to others. I know who's listening here. 
both now and later, when you will take them aside and say, I have every reason right now to go into anxiety and fear, and although there is a little bit occasionally, I feel an overwhelming sense of well-being. For I know that this will indeed solve itself. There will be solutions that I don't know now, and I'm comfortable with it. Welcome to another dimension, dear ones, that a dimension that starts to move into the soul. Your soul belongs to you. It is a multidimensional part of you. And up to now, there has been a wall between you and the rest of you. On the other side of that wall, there is so much that will enhance your life. You start understanding your cellular structure a lot better. How many of you right now, as you experience your cellular structure, your bodies, perhaps are looking at yourself in a way that is so linear, where there is only your head. That is where you sense everything. That is where you think. That's where you feel pain and pleasure. And you look down upon your body and you say, I just hope the rest of you last. <laughs> and that's that linear approach that we have talked about before. What if suddenly you start to feel the rest of your body as a friend? What if you start to feel the rest of your body not only as a friend, but as something that you have control over because consciousness in you is the boss of your cells? How many of you understand now that you can start having a dimensionality that allows you to touch, perhaps, and feel, perhaps, the multidimensional pieces and parts of your own cellular structure. Find what did you just say? Let me put it this way. Imagine yourself standing in the middle of a stadium and there's a trillion entities in the stands all looking at you and the spotlight comes in and you realize you're standing in your body's DNA field and your DNA is looking at you saying, what do you want? You're the boss. You are the consciousness of the body. And then you have the chance to say, I want health. I want you all to behave. I want the immune system to be as strong as it ever has been. And I'm going to help you because I have intuition to go here and there and do this and that. I want longer life. I want all of you. Pay attention, you might say. Up there in the stands, pay attention because I am the boss. That's what I'm saying. Did you ever think about that? Or the option is this. There is the stadium. You stand in the middle of it and no light ever comes on. And all that DNA and those trillions of cells get tired of waiting for instructions. So they're just going to go and do their best on their own with the environment, with the diseases, with the unhealthy things, because the boss never said anything. Dimensionality is so big, you're in such a small part of it. But as you then go toward that place where you start to broach what you're used to, going into not five or six or seven, but multi-dimensional energies and aspects. Don't number them, dear ones. You can if you choose because you're linear. If you want to say you're going into five because it's after four, go ahead. But that's not so. Multidimensionality does not work that way. It's not linear. You can't even count the dimensions. Not really. They're just there as a soup of enablement. Then you start realizing, what if I could move into a place where I could feel my divinity, my soul? Does your soul belong to you or does it simply belong to God and you have nothing to do with it? It's an interesting esoteric question, isn't it? Here's the answer. Your soul has always been the core of you. You're only simply aware of height, width, depth, and time. You're only aware of a piece, a tiny piece, of who you really are. 
That has been the low consciousness that you put yourself in until the shift, and now it starts to move. As you start to broach this and start to feel things, you realize it's easier to feel peaceful. Now, what have you done? Have you identified a piece and a part of your soul? You have not. All you know is that you are feeling something that you never felt before that goes beyond logic. It's something that it seems like you're getting helped from beyond. It's really you getting closer to the divinity of you. Your soul is from the creative source, that which is God. Your soul is part of you and the creative source. You are a part of creation, dear ones. That's what the soul is. And so here you are starting to broach the issue of getting out of that reality that is so small and into one that enhances the core that you're used to. Oh, but there's so much more. This is why I have created the circle of 12 and pushed my partner into the breach and told him to do it. Something he's never done before, but something he will get used to because he's already feeling it. Every time he goes there, he's looking around and he's saying, where was this before? Where was this for 31 years of my teaching? I know what he's thinking. In some ways, he's amazed. In other ways, he's angry. Why didn't I get this before? Why now? Why now? Why now? And the answer is because humanity is ready now. And that is the shift, and that is the reason we have called it the new normal. Oh, but there's more. I want to introduce you to a friend, a multidimensional friend called Gaia. There have been those on the planet who have actually channeled the energy of Gaia. I'm not going to do that. But what I'm going to do is give the message from Gaia to you. It's a beautiful message, dear ones, and it may shock you and surprise you with the depth of it. And here it is. I know you. You don't know me. Not really. Well, I know you. I know all of yous. I know every single incarnation as you put your first steps onto me. When you came out of the womb, what you did was to inhale for the first time that which was me. All the oxygen that poured into your lungs was me. And I knew you at that point. I knew the sentience of you and your soul that you were back. I knew of your former names. You really hadn't met me yet. I knew you all the way through that childhood, the first steps in the sand and the dirt and how it felt and how you squealed with joy with something new. For those of you who got to the, to the water's edge, whether it was oceans or lakes, and felt me as the water that washed over you and cleansed you and made you feel clean and, and cool, I was there. I was there every time you did it, dear ones. I know all of yous. I know every single time you did this, over and over. I welcomed you to this planet every single time you opened your eyes for the first time, looked around, filled your lungs in those first cries, almost like saying, welcome back. I know you. I was there. I've been there when your tears hit the dirt, and I felt your sorrow, and I put my arms around you. And some of you didn't even feel it, didn't even know it. 
and some of you did. When you walked into the fields and felt something different, refreshing, that was me. And almost every human being has done that at some point in their lives and felt a tug perhaps to return there to those places where I am. I know all of yous, but you see, you really don't know me. I've always had my hand out in guidance and in friendliness and in all the things that that which is Gaia can be, because I know you. I've been there when you died, dear one, so many times. When you took the last breath, I was there. When some of you hit the dirt, literally, in battle, hit the dirt, I was there. When your tears and your fear and your blood ran into the sand over and over in the, in the horror of battles of the, of the earth, I, I was there, I was there, all of you. When some of you came off the ships in battle and sunk into the ocean and the water filled your lungs and you struggled for air and your eyes got wide, <laughs> this is for my partner who was afraid of drowning because I just described him. I was there. I was there for all of them. Dear ones, every single one. I've watched you come. I've watched you go. I've held your hand. I've given you oxygen for every single breath that you've ever taken. I've washed you and your soul over and over with the waters, the rains, the lakes, the oceans. I've heard your giggles and your laughter, and I've shared your pain. I am Gaia partner of yours on planet earth would you like to get to know me because I really know you I know you I'm in the animals of the forest who for some of you are important for sustenance I am in the dirt of the earth I cover the seeds I grow the food that you eat. I'm in the forests that supply all manner of things for you, including some of the most profound cures for the diseases that you might have. I have all of that grown specifically for you, all of you. This is who I am. I am the one who fills you with joy when the, when the sun goes down and you watch the colors in the sky and the atmosphere. That is me. I am the one who soothes the lovers as they watch the sun come up or down, hand in hand, over and over, and wonder why it feels such majesty and why they feel the way they do when the earth winks at them when the sun goes down. That's me. I've been with you in every romance, every birth. I've been there when you went through the pain. Dear ones, both genders you have been, the joy and the pain of the childbirth. I've been with you when you looked into your infant's eyes for the first time. I was there all the time, every time. I have stood beside you and begged you to pay attention to me because I can enhance your life. I can make it better for you because we are symbiotic, the two of us, human being, and I have so much to give to you. But you don't know me. Not anymore. And so, dear ones, with the increase in dimensionality, you're going to start sensing me and I want to make it clear, don't be afraid. 
because I am Gaia, and I know you. I know you. That is the message, dear ones. From your earth to you right now. The ancestors of this planet reside in the dirt of the earth, figuratively. All the past lives you have ever been are still here, figuratively, but esoterically, accurately. There is so much here that is yours. The knowledge of who you've been, what you've learned, what to do next, how to have peace, how to heal yourself is all there. This is what humans are starting to go through. It's a frightening time for those who are not old souls, for all they see is change. But many of you old souls are starting to see and recognize enhancements in your awareness. Being aware that you were aware as been stated in this very conference. You're starting to be aware that your awareness is changing. And so the things that you're being shown, finally, ways of crossing the bridge from what you thought was real into a grander reality. I said it before, I'll say it again. You're going from black and white to color. And that requires adjustment, wisdom, tolerance, and permission. This is what's going on right now to humanity. Uncomfortable for some, comfortable for many. But all of it is appropriate. I close with this. You think you are unique to this galaxy and you're not. I have said this before, you are the new ones. The humans are the newest on this planet that exists in this galaxy at the moment. There is a vast family that lives also in this galaxy, vast. And it's there Naturally, dear ones, the things that created life here on this planet are the same elements and attributes that have created life everywhere. You're not alone. And so some of those places, if you want to call that, those planets who have had civilizations like yours, much like yours, looking like you, have gone into what you have gone into today. In different ways, they have experienced all of the wars, some even the genocides between them. All of the horror that you have seen in an old energy, many of them have also seen. But because they're older, they have come out of it. And they've gone through the shift and the changes. And they have become aware, more aware of their dimensionalities, just like you are occasionally. I want you to think, are you alone really or not? Is it possible? That in this vastness, there are trillions of others who've gone through what you've gone through. And I will tell you this, dear ones, that the pattern of what you're existing and saying, seeing now in, in your existence, that the pattern of your awareness and all that is real right now to you, everything you're going through has been seen before. I have seen it. I know where it goes. And if you could see that, even with free choice, I know where it's going. And if you could see that, I think you'd feel a whole lot better. That's what the shift is about. The light is coming on, dear ones. Don't be afraid of it. Old soul, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, it's time to discover the rest of you. <laughs> I leave it at that. These are special times, beautiful times. 
trying times for many because they don't understand anything I've said. You will, in time, understand everything I've said. For it will become your history. And you will look back and smile. And you'll say, yes, I remember when I was growing up. When consciousness was just starting to evolve. And I was only just beginning to learn the greater truth that has always been here. That I am loved dearly by the creator. And now it's time to meet him. And so it is.